Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. We're back today in the series of things you may have missed in Elden Ring with the start of Mikula's Halig Tree. Before we get into it, I'm going to give you a very quick rundown of a new build that I'm going to be trying out. And I focused this around Arcane and the Dragon Communion spells, along with pumping a lot of points into decks to make sure that my Arcane weapon of choice, Morgoth's Cursed Sword, does as much damage as possible. Then I've combined that with the Serpent Bow, which also scales with Dex and Arcane, and has inherent poison buildup. So that, combined with the poison-tipped arrows, is going to cause a crazy amount of poison buildup in every enemy. My stats do appear slightly inflated at the moment, as we have got Godric's Great Rune active, and we're also using Marika's Scar Seal, along with a Talisman to increase the range of arrows, and also our final two to increase the potency of incantations and shorten spellcasting time. I've also got on the Silver Tear Mask as that gives us plus 8 in Arcane, and I will be swapping out the rest of my actual armor set later on in the Halig Tree, because it just does not give me anywhere near as much defense as I hoped it would. I wanted to try and min-max my resistances whilst lowering my equipment load, but it ended up just making me very, very squishy. And as you can see whilst I've been jabbering on, using the mighty shot from the bow poisons enemies in two shots, and we can absolutely obliterate them with our dragon spells, and overall we just do an insane amount of damage whilst using a very, very fun to use build. There's not much to talk about during the first segment of this area, just along the end of this tree. There's an item here that I accidentally already looted off camera as I was testing out the build, so go and grab that, but it's very minor. And now I'm just going to spend some time clearing up all the enemies in the area, and I'll call out the loot as and when I come to it. As you've been able to make your way further along the tree, you'll get a Golden Rune 10 here. I didn't quite realise the range that the envoys aggro at, so you've got three of them all in a line spamming attacks at me over on this distant tree over here. So I'm now going to show you the true power of the Serpent Bow with Mighty Shot and just absolutely destroy them while staying well out of reach of their attacks. Honestly, this bow makes this area very fun and a lot more manageable. Though that being said, I am going to die a few times during this area. Now we can move a bit further along and there is a load of ants below us. These ants pack way more of a punch than any ants before. As you can see, one of them manages to get his gunk off on me and does a third of my health. So I am going to spend some time cheesing them and trying desperately to stay out of range of them. Once nearly all of them are dead, I'm going to drop down here and show off the Ash of War of the curved sword that I'm using. The Cursed Blood Slice looks so cool and it staggers them just long enough that I can take them out before they're able to counterattack. Now we can grab another Golden Rune 10 here. And right at the very end, once we've finally taken out the giant envoy, you can loot the envoy crown. Now swing round to the left hand side and get some dappled cured meat and a smithing stone 8. Now we'll jump off and head back along the tree and I'll meet you on the now free ant section just here for the next part of the video. Okay, so next I'm going to contemplate making a very scary jump over to this epic item here. And then a giant Miranda Bloom decides to make the decision for me. So we'll make the leap. Luckily, everything goes all right and we get a stone sword key. And then at the end on the mushrooms here, you can get a preserving bolus. And I'm now once again going to spend some time clearing out all the envoys before we do some more looting. Once they're all dead, we'll go and take out all these flowers and grab the fire grease while we're doing it. Right at the end of this tree branch is the giant Miranda Bloom that tried to kill us before. And now that that's dead, I'm going to jump down here where we killed all the envoys and die. After just spending a good 30 minutes very carefully killing all the enemies in this area. So let's respawn and see how we can try and make the best of a bad situation. I decided to spend a load of time off camera clearing up all the enemies and you meet me now at the bottom of the branch where all the ants were. After taking out these envoys, we can then grab four warming stones from the end. And further down is the way to the next area. We're not going to go there yet. We'll turn back round. And after sniping these three envoys, we can head up here. And on top of this pile of mushrooms is the prattling pate, my beloved. Now I'm going to start tackling the other envoys over to the southeast so that we can go and loot the final item. And as I'm trying to dodge his attack, fall off and die again. Third time's the charm, right? I join you now respawning back at the site of Grace, as I've just realised we did actually finish looting this first area. 
and where I was trying to get to is an item we did already grab. So, what I'm going to do after many deaths, I'm fed up of clearing this area again and again, we are going to beeline it to the next area. If you follow my path, hopefully you'll get there without too much trouble. And now you just want to keep watch for the giant envoy as he's shooting these massive bubbles at you, because they can very easily two-shot you, and there's five of them. So time your rolls and you should be fine working your way up to this safe spot. Once you get here and he's on one side of the tree branch and you're on the other, he isn't able to hit you, so we're going to cheese him to death with a few different spells. Now that he's dead, we can jump back off onto this branch, being very careful of the flowers as we loot a Newman's Rune and 10 Flaming Bolts. From here, we're going to run all the way to the bottom, jump on this structure, and start taking the ladder down to the second part of the Halig Tree. We'll be coming back and covering this in full, but for now, like the Sight of Grace, in case you die again, as I'm just about to do in three, two, one. For fuck's sake. Did I mention I hate this area? After a few more deaths, this is when I'm finally going to switch out my armor set. Run back round and cheese the giant envoy to death again. And now you can backtrack ever so slightly, work your way along to the end of this tree branch and take out this giant Miranda flower, should you wish. Probably not that worth it though, unless you're absolutely desperate for Aeonian butterflies, because that is the only item you can loot behind it. However, now come back on yourself, and up to the northeast, right at the top of this branch, you will find one of each envoy. The regular, the large, and the giant variety. And if you manage to take them all out, you will then be able to loot the Oracle Envoy Ashes. And the very last thing we want to do here is run up this one final branch, and on the platform you can get some Lost Ashes of War. Now let's teleport back to the Halig Tree Town site of Grace, and we're finally done with that bloody tree. Now that we've progressed to the Halig Tree Town itself, Let's head on in, and I'll take you through everything that you can loot. As soon as you exit the door, you'll be ambushed by a misbegotten, which you'll see I've defeated just here. There's a few more on your left-hand side as you come down these stairs, so be very careful dealing with them, and then you can grab a Golden Rune 10. There's also a misbegotten Crusader that sometimes jumps down and attacks you. However, sometimes he stays upstairs and he doesn't, and I'll show you where he is in just a second. Firstly, we'll start to head up this ladder, be very careful as there's a load of zombies up here and another winged misbegotten. Once you've taken them all out or they've fallen off, you can grab the rock grease and then just on the other side of this ledge is where the misbegotten crusader is that I was talking about. Be very careful because he can jump over and attack you if you don't kill him quick enough. And then over on the other side here, you'll get the Pearl Drake Talisman plus two. Now we can drop off the edge of this balcony onto this big tree branch to start continuing over to the next section. Before you now go anywhere else, you can use this branch as an opportunity to take out the enemies below you. There'll be another misbegotten that will start to try and make his way up to you, along with a load of zombies. And once we play a little game of to me to you with the misbegotten and we take him out along with the zombies, we can now head into this room. Just be very careful as another one will be waiting around the corner to ambush you. So I'm gonna bait him out and bring him to a bigger area so it's easier to fight him. Now that he's dead, we can head further into the room where there'll be another one facing away from us just here that we can start to cheese. And be very careful as you're taking him out because there's another one waiting under the stairs also ready to ambush you. So once again, I'm gonna back out and lead him out of the room. And I'm actually able to cheese him through the wall with Cursed Blood Slice, which is nice. Now that he's dead, we can grab the Smithing Stone 8 here before heading down and taking out the other Misbegotten under the stairs. Now you can grab six Hefty Beast Bones from this corpse. Just outside the other exit to the building is also a Golden Rune 13 that you can grab. And now we'll carry on out the northern entrance and down the ladder. You can drop down further still and you'll find two giant Miranda Blooms. Be very careful taking them out because they will tag team you and cover each other's backs with their various attacks. Now that we've dealt with that first one, there's an Aeonian butterfly that you can grab just here. And as I'm taking out the second one, what we're going to do next is head up the ladder just behind him. 
And you want to come this way first because there will be another misbegotten around the side of the building waiting to ambush you. So make sure you take him out and then you'll see just in front of this statue where you've got a legendary item is another misbegotten crusader. So be very cautious as you're taking him out because you will inevitably aggro another misbegotten as well. I'm going to be super cautious and just try and cheese them with spells and arrows through this building. Eventually, though, he does come through and start to take me out. And this becomes a very dicey fight. I already died to him a few times, so I'm already on edge. Taking this, if anything, too cautious and opening myself up to a few attacks. But eventually he does go down. Now we'll climb back up that side ladder again and grab a misbegotten shortbow. And this is actually the only other shortbow in the game that I have found. And it is literally just a better version of the shortbow. So if you like the really quick attacks and the barrage ability of your shortbow, this is a great upgrade, albeit very, very late on in game. Now that we've taken out the other misbegotten I was on about earlier, we can come and grab the legendary item, which is an ancient dragon smithing stone. And at this point, it might be interesting for you to know that there are a total of 13 collectible ancient dragon smithing stones and 8 collectible somber ancient dragon smithing stones in any one playthrough. Because being such a rare upgrade material and having such a versatile array of weapons, by the end of the game, you'll probably find that you'll want to use every single one of them. Now head out onto this balcony, just be careful because a few zombies will try and jump out and grab you. So I'm going to bait out their attacks and then take them out along with the misbegotten. Now we can loot the Somberstone 8 and continue on along the wooden bridge here. As we get to the other side of this bridge, we can grab a Golden Rune 12 and also light the summoning pool should you wish. Then run around the back of the structure and down the branches here. Before dealing with the ants, I'm going to head into this building and take out the zombies, whilst also grabbing the Somber Stone 9, to make sure I have an exit strategy should the fight with the ants go very poorly, which I can assure you it probably will. So now I'm going to try and stay just out of reach of their vom, because it's deadly lethal, incredibly accurate and very powerful. So I'll start to very slowly but surely cheese them all to death, and I'll meet you back just where they are once they're dead. And here we go, with the last one dead, we can now come onto the branches and grab the four Aeonian butterflies. And that's it. That's a whole reason we were there, just for some butterflies. Yeah, not worth. So now come back on top of the structure and jump on this roof. Near the edge of the roof, you can grab a smithing stone six. And off in the distance, you'll see a spirit called a snail. As you've probably guessed, he is what's keeping the Crystallion alive. So take him out and the Crystallion will despawn. As you drop down, there's another one just around the corner here that you also want to take out. Because he will instantly spawn another Crystallion to try and ambush you. And then as you go over and grab this Golden Rune 10, you'll see a third Crystallion spawn. I'm going to run away and prepare myself before we then try and seek out the final Spirit Caller Snail. So now let's head back down. And you'll see just around the corner on the ledge below where the Crystallion spawned is the third and final Spirit Caller Snail. Once they're all taken out, you've got yourself some breathing room. Well done. Now we're going to make a very big, well-timed jump over to this roof here. And I'm now just going to spend some time clearing out all these zombies and grabbing the loot, including the Smithing Stone 6, before I then meet you back here for the next part of the video. As we move into this part of the video, there's a few different ways to cover the area, and I will be getting to every item, but the first thing I'm going to do is hop over the roofs here, and on the other side is a load more zombies that we can take out. And the reason I've done this is so we can run all the way over to the east edge here and cheese this mage. There's two of them. You can probably see the other ones skulking in the shadows right over towards the east in the building, and they have insane amounts of health and damage. They have ended many a run through this area for me in previous playthroughs. So I don't feel even the slightest bit of remorse cheesing the hell out of these guys. Now that that first one's dead, we're going to drop down and take out these misbegottens from behind. Because at this point in the zone, I'm incredibly low on all of my HP and FP replenishment items. So we need to be as careful as we can possibly be now. Also, you can jump out of this window and go and grab a butterfly. 
I'd advise not doing so. It's a very dangerous jump or a very small reward, but I will be doing this later anyway, just to show you. For now though, let's run back through this building and into the previous one that we were on top of a minute ago. Round the corner in the first room on your right is a misbegotten waiting to ambush you. We're going to ignore him for now and go into the last room because there's a crimson scarab in here that we really need to kill to get some more healing. I'm going to have to very carefully leg it past the giant misbegotten here before he kills me and then use a few of these healing items to get back to full health again. Now I'm going to use my mixed physic because it allows me to cast spells for free for a very short period of time and we've completely run out of FP, and that allows me to spam some rot breath on the giant misbegotten here. Now that we've killed him, we can go around and take out the one lying in ambush that we passed earlier, which allows us to loot the sacramental bud. Now we're done here, so we'll head back the other way, and before we prepare to fight that other mage, I'll do this jump just to show you that at the end of this branch, you can get yourself an Aeonian butterfly. Really not worth it, so let's head back inside. Also, you'll see I did pop some Starlight Shards. As I've advised before, you can use these to purchase items from Saluvius, so I would advise not doing so. However, as I screwed Rani's questline during this playthrough, I have no other need for them, so I'm going to use them to give myself a little bit of FP. I can now use this to start cheesing the second and final mage, which is a little bit more of a scary fight than the other one, as he does get close enough to start fighting us. However, with some very clever use of the wall here, he goes down without too many problems. Then we can come down to the end of this bridge and get a smithing stone 7 and 8. Then we'll loop back round and head up where the first one was. In this building, you can get a hero's rune 4. And we are now right in front of the boss arena. But before we go and fight the boss, go up the northwestern bridge, head up this lift, and you will have just unlocked a shortcut back to the only site of grace in this area. Honestly, this area is so intimidating purely because of how long it is before you actually manage to get another site of grace, because there is only the one and you have to unlock this shortcut. But now finally we've got a shortcut, we can rest up, we can get all of our healing back and prepare for the boss. As I'm going back down the lift and towards the boss room, you'll probably notice there's been absolutely no plugs during this video. I used to be really, really bad at plugging myself, and I feel like I've kind of overcompensated and gone the other way. So for the next few videos, I just wanted it to be purely entertainment, purely information, without me asking you to do this and do that. So, enjoy! I'm just going to ignore and sprint past the mage this time. I don't want to have to deal with him again. And we'll run into this giant arena, which we soon discover is the boss room for Loretta, Knight of the Halig Tree. And thanks to my Mimic tier, plus a very cheesy build, this fight becomes quite a doddle. And just for a little bit of waffle so that this fight can go on a little bit longer, due to the incredible support this channel has received recently, it has allowed me to upgrade my recording setup. So for anyone else out there that is interested in the hardware used behind the scenes, I'm now using a Shure SM7B microphone with the Go XLR mixing deck and hopefully it's going to really improve the quality of the videos going forward. So yeah, thank you so much to everyone here right now. You've allowed this to happen. I can't thank you enough. Now she's dead, we will be rewarded with Loretta's Mastery, which is an insanely awesome sorcery. It's like a more powerful version of Loretta's Great Bow. Oh, I kind of, I was teetering on saying bro then, wasn't I? Let me redo that. It's a more powerful version of Loretta's Great Bro, <laughs> which is already the furthest reaching spell in the game and one of the most powerful ones. And you'll also get Loretta's War Sickle, which has a very similar weapon art to the Wing Scythe, but it has a magic attack and has int scaling as opposed to the faith scaling of the Winged Scythe. Now we can go and rest at the Sight of Grace and start heading down these stairs. Make your way down this unnecessarily long ladder. And then before you head in the room in front of you with the lift, go up and round the stairs here. Up here, you'll be able to grab yourself a butterfly. But much, much more importantly, one of the only 13 ancient dragon smithing stones in the game. As you'll see here, I now already have seven of them. I believe by this point in the playthrough, I've used one or two as well. So there's only a few more left to collect. And now, finally, we can head down the lift and we will be in Elphael. El Elfail? That sounds so dumb. It can't be pronounced Elfail, surely. 
the brace of the halig tree obviously we will start exploring this in another video but let me just quickly get you to the first site of grace so that you can rest up and feel safe so we'll grab this three holy grease and be very careful as we're taking out this clean rot knight and then in here if you've been progressing her quest line you will find millicent and you'll be able to rest at the prayer room site of grace I have actually also finished the recording for Millicent's questline, so that will be coming up very soon as well. And with that, all I have left to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.